Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Motai Media, and today we've got a brand new review of Zed's record, Talos. Before we get any further, this video is indeed sponsored by the channel members of the channel, the Bowtie Gang and the Elite Bowtie Society. Uh, the channel members, as they get a say each week in voting for uh, what video gets posted, and this was the one that won, so let's get into it. Yes, indeed, the man, the myth, the electronic dance music icon Zed is here with his third studio album. And Zed has actually had a pretty interesting career up to this point, actually. Back in late 2012, Zed dropped his debut record, Clarity, that included uh, major hit tracks like Clarity and Spectrum. He then followed that up just two and a half years later with True Colors, his sophomore project that had its fair share of iconic tracks like I Want You To Know and Beautiful Now. Zed had quickly showcased his prowess and knacked for production at an early age, becoming one of the few superstars in the EDM space. But for the past decade, it seemed that Zed was fairly content with his career by not forgoing production completely, but substantially slowing down his output in favor of a couple of the more bigger releases here and there like Stay or The Middle. So while Zed hadn't really disappeared from the musical landscape these past nine years, his presence seemed like a fraction of what it once was. So when we got the eventual start of this album release cycle, uh, there were a lot of expectations for this album and with vastly different opinions on where people thought it should go sonically. Because while Zed may have made his name in the depths of his kind of grand progressive electro house tunes, uh, his latest big hits all danced around this kind of funky electro pop style. So what does Zed do? Well, he goes back to the well for a couple big house tunes on this record, keeps his funky production present as well, and manages to go a completely new direction. In fact, Zed kept his cards pretty close to his chest with the anticipation for this record, choosing to release only two singles prior to to the release of Talos. Out of Time was the first single and lead track of the record and was a sign of good things to come for many Zed fans. This track embodied that kind of classic Zed sound with grand and progressive electro house and these kind of big moments and orchestral movements. That being said, I don't really feel like Zed knocked it out of the park on this track in particular. At its core, this song is a true homage to both his true colors and clarity eras and turns up that cinematic dial up to 11. Yet how he got to and from that core sound feels a little disjointed. The intro and pre-chorus sections do lots of building and building and building, but it all sort of culminates in a fairly lackluster drop. And it's not that it's necessarily a bad one, it's just not as explosive and grand as I would have expected considering how masterful the lead-ins were. Even on the back end with the very intentional orchestral instrumentation and string sections, it's all kind of coded in this very regal feeling at least everything but the drop. But regardless, for OG Zed diehards, there's tracks like this one, Out of Time, also Desensis and Dream Brother that kind of feel like this classic Zed. Desensis brings out Mesto for a production feature for a track that feels undoubtedly like it belongs on True Colors. It's a more straightforward electro house cut with big drops and a punchy bass line. I particularly love the vocal layering on the chorus here, something that Zed does often throughout this record and to great success. But it's Dream Brother that I actually think teeters this line between classic Zed and a more modern, newer sounding Zed. Here you've got your sort of commercial progressive house sound that has become synonymous with Zed's production, but now there's a certain maturity to this track. If anything, it's a newer tone that really resonates with a listener like me who grew up on Zed. It's almost as if his sound is maturing alongside his audience. Rather than staying where he did with his older sound, he's taking it and expanding upon it and maturing and aging with his audience. Covering Jeff Buckley's Dream Brother, Zed has kind of fused together the younger sounds of EDM with a kind of older, more adult contemporary style of production. And it's mainly the back half of this record that most closely resembles this new sound for Zed. And particularly here, having Jeff Buckley on Dream Brother, even John Mayer on Automatic Yes, and Muse on 1685. Each of these three artists have a certain pull with older audiences, a demographic that Zed is clearly trying to tap into. And well, Automatic Yes with John Mayer isn't the most impressive track, I would say, on the record, it already has seen a decent amount of success with a typically non-EDM crowd. And Matt Belmay of Muse brings us his first official feature and songwriting credit for a non-Muse track, on 1685. Interpolating Prelude C in Major by Bach, Muse and Zed here close out this record with a grand operatic finale. If anything, I think this back half of the record and these three tracks in particular may resonate with a currently younger audience as they find a new appreciation for these tracks potentially later on in life. They're tracks that I think actually age better than maybe anything else on this record. But the real highlight tracks for me here were Tangerine Rays and Lucky, two very 
funk-oriented electropop tunes. It seemed only natural that having produced those mega hits with Stay and The Middle, that Zed would incorporate some of those same sounds into this record as well. And boy, did they not disappoint. Lucky is actually the second and last single to be released in this album cycle and sees production support from Ellis and Dwilly for a absolutely funky banger. Remy Wolf as well gives a great vocal performance as the kind of snappy production gives the whole track a sense of impact and power. And Tangerine Rays is without a doubt Zed's best funky track. Ellis gets an official feature on this as Bia Miller also gives a substantially stronger performance than she did on Out of Time that landed just before this on the track list. The bouncy synths, nasty vocal range, and extended outro are what make this track a favorite of mine. And while not my absolutely favorite of the record, Shanti is stylistically the most interesting cut from this record, going for a more kind of Arabian Middle Eastern vibe. Gray gets a production feature on this one, and it shows as this very much incorporates the sounds from their latest Contra EP that they released a couple months ago. So I would say that there's a lot going well for this album. Yet, there are numerous times throughout where the movement maybe feels incomplete or an idea not fully fleshed out. Shanti in particular has an incredibly short second drop. Lucky could have used a whole third movement considering it's just two minutes long. No gravity is kind of boring and Sona doesn't really match up with the aesthetic of this record. And above all else, I think the decision to have half of this record be continuous and the other half not really is a tall tale sign that not everything was meticulously looked over before the final release. For all the hype and lead in that this album album had for the decade before its release, um, it's pretty clear that Zed wasn't 100% sure where he wanted to go and still wasn't by the time of its release. Like there's bits and pieces of gold that Zed kind of stumbled upon but didn't really know how to holistically piece it together for a cohesive record. From a purely personal standpoint, I love a lot of what this record has to offer and it has a little bit of everything for me in particular. I absolutely love Tangerine Rays and Ellis's funky production feature on it. I love Shanti as well. I'm actually a fan of Automatic Yes with John May. I like Muse a ton, and so there's a lot going for this album for me that I really, really enjoy. But from a critical analysis perspective, I can see where the cracks begin to show. So in full transparency, I'm finding it hard to land the kind of plane on my overall thoughts of this record. If I could simply sort of turn my brain off and listen to it on a more kind of surface level, my enjoyment for this record would be greater for sure. But that's just not really who I am. Part of why I love this channel is because I really like to dive into the subtle nuances and minute details of everything everything. I want a reason to dive in deeper and be rewarded for it. So in the end, I think that if you as a listener think that this is Zed's best work, you can do so. I actually understand you. And if you as a listener think that this is Zed's worst work, I also understand you. But for me, I think I'm somewhere right in the middle, being pulled in two very different directions. Ultimately, I think this record is a mixed bag of everything Zed has to offer up to this point in his career, as well as some sort of newer, more mature sound. And I think it's a good album, just not one that maybe will be cemented in the EDM history books. With that being said, I will give Zed's Talos a bowtie 7 out of 10. But thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this record holistically, individual tracks, anything I have to say right there in the comment section below. But other than that, I'm Dakota from Bowtie Media, and I'll see you guys in another video.